Amen and thank you, choir. Good evening, church. Good to see you. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. All right. Thank you so much. Let's stand as we sing, We Will Glorify. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come tonight to your table. It's not our table, Lord. It's not anybody's table. It is your table. And we come, Lord, to give you praise, to have fellowship with you, and to say, Lord, we surrender all, all over again. Lord, may tonight be the night that you touch our lives afresh and anew. May tonight, Lord Jesus, we have a toe-to-toe, knee-to-knee experience with you as we have fellowship around this table, your sacred table. Thank you for loving us, Lord. And tonight, we simply come saying, we love you, Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, our Savior, and our Lord. In 
Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, church, I have a surprise for you tonight. You like surprises, don't you? My wife has, likes surprises. And um, so tonight, after church, guess what? There was a whole lot of hot dogs and buns left over from yesterday afternoon. So we are invited to, to the fellowship hall after church, and we're just going to have a hot dog, hot time fellowship. How does that sound? Uh, Darren's wife, Patty, has made some chili, and um, Brother Ted has grilled all the hot dogs for us. So, so we're just going to have a good time together in the Lord. So you come after we have our service tonight and worship the Lord, and you come. Is that a pretty good surprise, amen? Uh, I, I mean, you know, I, this cowboy's excited. Anytime we say eat, man, I'm all in, amen? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, uh, I'm sorry about that TV audience. Um, you just have to enjoy that with us through your mind. Because we can't, we can't do home deliveries tonight, right church? But uh, we're so glad that you are joining us by means of TV tonight as well. Let us continue to pray for our, pra our pastor, Brother Randy, and, uh, and Debbie as, as she uh, helps him and helps him to get, uh, to get better and to get well. We're looking forward to getting him back. And, and uh, we can only support him. He can only be as strong as our prayer. So let's lift him up this week and really bathe him in, in, in prayer and uh, so that he can get back to us and, and be here ready to, uh, to help us and to preach for us come, come this next Sunday. All right, let's stand and welcome each other in the Lord. We have fellowship around the table tonight. Let's have fellowship from the pews as well.
Heavenly Father, we come tonight to return a small portion to you of what you have given to us, how you've blessed us, Lord. So I, tell you to t I pray tonight, Lord, to take this offering, multiply it as it passes through your hands to the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord, this earthly kingdom. And one day, we'll stand before you with hearts of joy, our Lord and our Savior. These things we ask in your name. Amen.
If you have your Bibles tonight, I'd like to read a few verses from Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, starting with verse 17. Matthew 26, 17 reads, Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? And he said, Go into the city to such a man, and say unto him, The master saith, My time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Now when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, Verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful, and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And then dropping down to verse 26. 
And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung in him, they went out into the Mount of Olives. The only thing I'd like to say about this tonight is to say that there are times in our lives, I think, that we all have a difficult time. We all have mountains to climb. We all have dry seasons. We all fall short at times. We all miss the mark at times. As Brother Gazee used to preach, I remember so distinctly, he'd said, when the festitudes of life, and I went for years not knowing exactly what that meant, but uh, finally looked it up, the festitudes of life, when they blow in, we all have struggles at times, and we all fall short at times. We all miss the mark at times. And the only reason I talk about that, because it is a wonderful passage for me, at least, to read in the scripture where it shows and it tells that when our Lord said to his disciples, right before he was crucified at the Lord's Supper time, when he revealed to them, verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Judas was not the only one who said, Lord, is it I? The scripture says that one by one, they all said, Lord, is it I? Why would they have asked that? I think they asked that because they were human just like we are. They were in the flesh just like we are. They were not perfect just like we are not perfect. And they all had a doubt, a question mark in their heart that possibly they could be the one that could betray Jesus. I think we all find ourselves there at times. We all question ourselves at times. Am I really saved? Am I really living my life the way I should be living it? Am I really the person that Jesus expects me to be? But I think the beauty of tonight's message of the Lord's Supper is that praise be to God. It's not dependent upon us, is it? It's dependent upon what the Lord did for us. So even though they all question that in their hearts, and at times we may question that in our hearts, it's a wonderful thing to know that the Lord promises us that he will never leave us nor forsake us, that he'll always be there for us, that we believe in what we read in scripture when it teaches us, for I know in whom I have believed and I'm committed I'm, I'm convinced that he's able to keep that against that day that I've committed unto him. What a wonderful thing that is that we read in scripture. So even though the disciples had that question in their heart, uh, that's an encouragement to me because we also have questions in our heart. But it's a wonderful thing that, that, that it's not dependent upon us. And I guess as a younger Christian, as a younger man, I went through taking the Lord's Supper at times almost routinely. And I don't mean I was disrespectful of it. I don't mean I didn't appreciate it. But I'm not sure I spent the time actually focusing in on what the Lord had done for me personally. Without what the Lord's Supper represents, we have no access to God. Without what the Lord's Supper represents, we cannot bow our heads and pray to the Lord for him to be with our loved ones, our sick children, our sick grandchildren. Without the Lord's Supper and what it represents, we cannot at funerals celebrate in our hearts 
that our loved one is over there with the Lord for eternity. If it were not for the Lord's Supper and what the Lord's Supper represents to us individually, we would have no hope. We would have no opportunity. We would have nothing to look forward to. So, in my heart of hearts, when I think about the Lord's Supper, I really tell myself, you need to really contemplate exactly what the Lord has done for you. And it becomes real in my heart when I think about that because um, I didn't know what, it, I, I remember being at Scott Foods with my dad working in the grocery store. And I remember talking to uh, customers in the store. And I would ask about how their family was doing and I'd ask about their children or what, whatever. That's before Gina and I had children. And they would talk about their children, and at times they would talk about a child or their grandchild or something being done wrong by somebody. And all of a sudden, their voice would change, and they would get this look in their eye that kind of, uh, it, it, was, it was a look in their eye that I didn't understand. And I didn't understand it until we had our own children and grandchildren, and now I know perfectly well what that look means, and that is, you can do whatever you want to to me, but don't lay your hand on my child or my grandchild. We all know what that means, don't we? And so, to contemplate that God allowed his only begotten son to hang on a cross and to be crucified and to shed his blood on the cross for someone as undeserving as I am and maybe some of you feel like that you are, that is a wonderful, wonderful thing in our life to stop to celebrate. So, Brother Dakins, if you'll come down, we'll do the Lord's Supper. Thank you.
Has everyone been served that wishes to be served? The body of Christ broken for you.
Has everyone been served that wishes to be served?